In this recording, we will work a few examples. We'll start with some conceptual questions. Is it possible to have motion without a force? Okay, I hope we agreed on that. Yes, that's Newton's first law. Whenever something is moving, who cares about how did it get there? But once it, it is moving, it does not need a force to keep it on moving. So, uh, an object can be moving without a force acting on it while it is moving. Is it possible to have forces without motion? Absolutely. For example, we'll take the simple case, a block on top of a desk or on the floor. There are forces acting on it, the normal force, the gravitational force. They are balanced, but it's not moving. Okay, we can add forces. Uh, let's say Christy here, pushing on it this way, and Mark here, pushing on it this way. If they both push with equal forces, then Christy and Mark's forces are going to be, uh, be balanced, and the gravitational force and the normal force are going to be balanced, so we still have no motion. So it is possible. Is it possible to have acceleration without a force? That? No. How do we know it's no? That's Newton's second law of motion. Sum of all forces is equal to ma. I need unbalanced forces to have acceleration. Without unbalanced forces, I don't have an acceleration. Is it possible to have forces without acceleration? Absolutely. That's the case we talked about before. When the forces are balanced, we don't have an acceleration. Okay. This is an interesting example. Sorry about the graphic. Uh, now, we have an astronaut on Earth. He kicks a ball and ball horizontally and hurts his foot. A year later, the same astronaut kicks a ball and ball on the moon, again horizontally, with the same force. Is his foot going to hit, uh, hurt more, less, or the same? Okay. A couple of things before we answer this. The ball is going to have the same mass. The weight of the ball when it is on the moon is going to be less. The weight is along the vertical. So along the vertical we are going to have a smaller weight and of course to balance it we are going to have a smaller normal force. Fn is going to be smaller than on Earth, and Fg is smaller than on Earth. It's about one-sixth as much as the value on Earth. Now, the kick, that force for a short time that the astronaut is going to exert on the ball. The kick is going to be along the horizontal, like they told us, so it's going to be along this direction. The kick is going to accelerate the ball and ball along that direction. Now, uh, if we apply Newton's second law, the normal force and the gravitational force are balanced, so the only thing remaining is the kick, let's call it F kick, FK for kick, is equal to the mass of the ball times A. Now, in both cases, Moon or Earth, that's what we are going to get. The force of the kick is m times a. Since the mass is the same, the force is going to be the same. So it's, uh, the astronaut is going to be hurt the same way. Of course, you see, uh, assuming everything else is the same. Now, the fact that the gravitational force is less, or in other words, the fact that the weight is less, does not affect what's on the horizontal. The main 
the main point of this question is to remember forces along the vertical affect only acceleration along the vertical or motion along the vertical and forces along the horizontal affect only acceleration along the horizontal they don't mix and match and here the kick is in both cases along the horizontal the fact that the gravitational pull is less on the moon is not going to alter that a bit since our kick is along the horizontal okay now uh, another question uh, a force F acting on mass M1 results in an acceleration A1 the same force acting on a mass M2 results in acceleration A2 that is twice A1 what can we say about the mass M2 okay so remember Newton's second law this force here is unbalanced so F is equal to MA1 here F is equal this is M1 A1 and this is M2 A2 so we calculate for M1 it's F uh, I mean for M1 so we are going to calculate M1 is equal to F since they are asking us about masses so that's what we are going to do and here M2 is F over A2 and since A2 we know it's twice A1 so it's F over twice A1 so I'm going to try to isolate what I have here that's what I have here so so I'm going to be left with M2 is equal one half times the term F over A1 in other words sorry for the space here in other words M2 is going to be equal M1 over 2 so the mass uh, M2 is half as much as M1 